So the anomaly is that low risk is associated with high returns, whereas high risk appears to be associated with low returns. Usually, you would expect exactly the opposite, that stocks with high volatility earn high returns as a reward for taking this risk. So when I think about a hedge fund, I mainly think about an investor, an investment fund, that is very flexible in what it does. That means uh, it can invest in a variety of assets. It can invest in a variety of trading strategies. What our paper is about uh, is that we argue that if you want to understand the relation between risk and return, you actually should look beyond volatility as a measure of risk. We argue that you should consider whether these stocks have a specific tendency to exhibit high downside risk as compared to upside potential. What happens if you ignore the skewness or downside risk of a firm stock is that you mismeasure the risk of the stock. You basically throw away a lot of information about the riskiness of the firm stock. Therefore, your volatility estimate is not an appropriate measure for the firm's risk. So, for example, what we have in mind is that a firm that has a very high downside risk, uh, for example, because it has a high probability of default, for, for this firm, just looking at the volatility might not be an appropriate reflection of the firm's true risk. And what we find is that um, strategies that are aimed at exploiting low-risk anomalies are directly connected to the skewness of the stocks that they are trading in. So what investment managers like hedge funds often do is they try to chase these low risk anomalies. They buy low volatility stocks and sell high volatility stocks. And from this strategy, they generate positive excess returns. This is puzzling because it should not be there. But what we show is that if you take the skewness into account, this pattern is not puzzling anymore because these betting against speeder strategies, as they are called, they basically deliver the highest returns among the stocks that have the most negative skewness, among the stocks that have the most severe downside risk. In other words, it seems like that these low risk anomalies compensate for risks like skewness that are more connected to extreme events for a firm's returns. So if you only look at volatility in your investment decision, you're missing some important ingredient to your risk assessment of the stock. What we suggest, and that is not like a secret sauce that is very new, we suggest to take these papers, extend asset pricing models that are used to understand the low risk anomalies so far to account for skewness, and then, in our opinion, um, these return patterns documented in the data, which are labeled as low risk anomalies, are not that puzzling anymore. So the main takeaway from our paper is that understanding the risk of a firm stock requires to look beyond volatility. It requires to also assess the likelihood of a severe down movement in the stock's price relative to the upside potential of the stock. Looking at the downside risk of the firm um, provides a more complete picture of the expected return that you can get on the stock. And doing so, complementing volatility and skewness there is no big low-risk anomaly anymore. <laughs>